It's 9.29 and I'm still working on the flowers for the Day of the Dead. I started making some really big ones for certain parts of the trellises. And then I have all of the smaller ones that I made. And some that are even smaller than that. So I'm still decorating right now and I need to get it done before midnight because at midnight it's going to be November 2nd, Dia de los Muertos. And usually they celebrate November 1st and November 2nd, but we celebrate my mom on November 2nd. So I, we're gonna go outside to the garden soon to set everything up. I wanted to do her outdoor altar on the potting bench. I wanted to cover it with a tablecloth and then set it up really nicely because it's centered right underneath the rose and grape tunnel. So I think it'll just look really beautiful for her. And my idea for the flowers is I want to attach, this one's not done, but I wanted to attach them in different areas of the trellises so that it looks like there's blooms there. Uh, what one was it? Like two years ago, I celebrated my little sister's 15th birthday in our backyard and I set everything up to look like a magical fairy tale. I'm gonna insert a picture if I can find it, but I had flowers like dangling down. It was stunning. Maybe I could attach some string and have some of these dangling down. I wonder how that'll look. I think if I stagger them, it might look really whimsical as well. So I'm just trying to hurry up because I haven't figured out the whole string situation or even how to attach these. The plan that's worked the best for me right now is to cut up several at a time and then I have a good stack. Oops, that's not how we can do. And then I have a good stack that I can start forming and then I move on to the next one. But okay, let me show you really quick how I make the flowers. This is for the really big one, and this is for the medium-sized one. And I, since I already made so many small ones, I'm not making any more. I bought this paper on Amazon because in store I could only find the one that were mixed colors. One, two, three, four. So I do 10 sheets because I have it folded in half, so it technically is 20 sheets. For the small ones, I only did five sheets that were folded in half, so 10 sheets total. But for the bigger ones, because there's so many, I want it to look really full because if I don't add enough paper, I feel like it makes it look very, like, very sparse. So I just put the paper down and then I take my pot and I set it down. Where did my pencil go? So I take my pot, lay it over the paper, and then I just trace with a pencil. There we go. And the outline is pretty faint. And I have a little bit more space over here to make two more little ones. And I like having different sized flowers because some of them will go on the trellises. Some of them can go on the, um, the altar. Hold on. And I really just use whatever I have on hand. Like this is some Nesquik. And I just put it on there. Trace it. And something else that really helped me, because, because the tissue paper tends to want to do its own thing at times, it, gets, it can get very slippery. I make sure that all of my sheets are folded over and then I just add a staple in the center of the stack. That way when I cut them out, they don't really shift too much. Last one. Just like that. And then I can easily cut it out. Where's my scissors? Hold on. Yeah, and then I just take my scissors and I cut them out. The smaller one, I probably could have separated it into two flowers, but it's okay. This one will just be extra, extra full. So I don't want to take the staple out and potentially ruin some of the paper. There we go. Now I am not the best with scissors, 
but it doesn't seem to make much of a difference. If, if the circle doesn't come out perfectly perfect, I find that you can't really tell once you make the slits. Once I have my circles cut out, I just start making slits like this all the way around. The skinnier the sections, the fluffier it becomes, but I feel like if I make it too skinny, it's very, very difficult to separate, like extremely difficult. And then I just take one section at a time and I pinch it at the base so that it starts looking like that. I grab the whole layer and I just keep pinching at the base one layer at a time. And then sometimes I just go in and sort of rough it up a little bit more just so that they don't look too perfect. And I'm basically just gonna hurry up to finish up the rest of the paper. But yeah, I just keep going layer by layer. To be honest with you, I was feeling a little bit stressed out trying to finish making all the flowers. I had initially started working on them a few weeks ago, but then I ended up getting really sick and I stayed sick for like a week or so. And then I had to quarantine to make sure that I didn't get my family sick. And by the time I was finally feeling good enough, I was cutting it really close to Dia de los Muertos, which is why I was staying up trying to finish making the flowers as quickly as possible. And my initial idea was to create hundreds and hundreds of flowers that I could hang with string. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to execute that this year but it's still a dream of mine to be able to do that for her one of these years. And now that I've ordered this tissue paper, I kind of know what I want to use. Unfortunately, this was the only orange tissue paper that I could find at this time of the year because it's really close to Halloween. So usually orange is sold out everywhere. But I've been brainstorming and one of my ideas is actually to buy lots and lots of orange plastic tablecloths that way I can try and make some flowers with it or at least some papel picado. That way they don't get ruined by rain or they don't get torn in the wind and I'm able to reuse them year after year. So that's one of the ideas that I have. As for the flowers, I think I'd like to make them with stems next time. That way I can replicate the look that I had for my younger sister Skinza because I think with the stems and some leaves, it added a lot more interest. Unfortunately, this time around, I didn't have enough time to do that much, but I'm already brainstorming on how to improve everything for next time.
the bigger ones are a lot easier to make. But I find that I have to scrunch them a lot more to make them look fuller. I started celebrating Day of the Dead just a few years ago after my mom passed away as a way to remember her and honor her and celebrate her and all of the memories that we have of her. And it makes me really happy to see my kids look forward to the celebration and to think about all of the little decor that they're going to make for Nana and to hear them ask me stories about her and what she was like because not all of my gremlins got to meet her. And I use this holiday from my culture to honor her because she is the main reason that serendipity exists at all. I know that I put in all of the hard work to make this garden what it is today, but the inspiration for the garden came from her in a time where I was filled with grief and pain. And through gardening, I was able to work through that grief and pain and gain some sort of peace back and so every year the most special harvest for me personally is being able to create a harvest basket for day of the dead to basically honor my mom and this isn't a holiday that i celebrated when i was younger at all i remember my mom telling me a couple of stories here and there about how beautiful it was in mexico when it was day of the dead and how the streets would be lined with marigolds and it was just a huge celebration and it wasn't really about being sad about those who have passed on but rather to celebrate and remember all of the happy times and i've been trying to work really hard on not getting so sad around day of the dead and trying to really experience the joy of celebrating and honoring my mom rather than feeling down in the dumps that she's gone and i feel like every year i'm getting a little better at it some days are still a little bit harder than others but i feel like eventually i'll get there and i'll keep working until i get there and i know that grief takes time and it's not a one size fits all there are days when i'm doing great and there are other days where i'm not but i just take it day by day and i try to remember the good times and i try to work through the hard times but this is the harvest and the celebration that i was referring to all of the times where i was working hard in the garden trying to set up the shade cloth trying to bring serendipity back to life trying to clean it up and make it beautiful again was for this moment right here to make it beautiful and presentable for dia de los muertos I'm done making all the flowers I was gonna make and right now I'm making papel picado and I wanted to go for more of a flower design because it's gonna be in the garden and look how beautiful this is my first time making it but I figured it would be similar to like when you make um, the snowflakes I don't know if you ever did that like in elementary school so I take about five sheets of paper and all of these will come out with the exact same design and I'm going to have mine doubled up, so for example, I'm going to put a little bit of hot glue. I was going to um, put a little string right through the center right there so that it's doubled up, making it just a teeny tiny bit thicker because with just one, I feel like it's a little too translucent. And like this, I think it's, it's prettier. This is gonna be five of the same design. I could probably try to do them all, but because I'm folding so much, it's just harder to cut when I make the layers too thick. But I like that design. So I want the design to be more in the center. So I fold it once like this. And then I'm gonna fold it again like this. then this little corner becomes like the center. So 
first, I think I'm going to cut, cut that off. And then to make the flower, I just do a couple of, a couple of petals. I'm going to do another one on this side. And then once I have it like that, I'm going to fold it again, but on this side. To complete the flower. And you see how thick that is now? <laughs> becomes way harder to cut through. There we go. And then I have all my petals done. Now I open it up. And I start folding these little corners in so that I can make cuts along here. And for these, I'm just going to stick to the triangles. And it turns into that. And then I do the same thing on the other corner. And then there we have it. And then when we unfold it, it looks like this. How pretty. Ah! Okay. I'm going to finish these up and then I should be ready to head outside soon. It's 10.56 now, so I need to hurry up. So I separate each of these like this and i'm doing about five to six per banner one two three four my six selected I take some cotton twine but any string will work and then I leave some hanging so I can tie it and then I open these up and I add about three little squeezes of hot glue then I fold it over and I add another two dots on the corners, just to keep things together. Woo, try not to rip it like I did. And that's the first one. Then I leave a few inches in between the next one. And I just keep repeating the same process. And here's uh, our tangle. Okay, and here's what it'll start to look like. It's 11:27 right now, and I'm about to head outside to start decorating. I have about half an hour. I think I should get it done. So I'm gonna start bringing things out there. It's a little chilly out here, but nothing too bad. I have some of the lights on. I'm a little scared of coming out here at night just because there's been a rodent in the garden. Doesn't this look so beautiful? I thought this would be the perfect place for my mom's altar 
I'm gonna try and hurry up, but I hope you enjoy. I made the papel picado a little bit too long, but that's fine. I'm just gonna cut it in half and that means I'll just have more. I also brought some more cotton twine just in case I need it. Which I think I will. I'm just gonna attach a little piece over here. And then I'm trying to be careful because at night is when all the spiders like to come out along with every other creepy crawly in the garden. Should I add a few more like right here? Or should I do three? Let me start off with three and then I'll see what I like better. I was really hoping that the roses would be in bloom again. And there's a few up here, but at one point there was blooms everywhere. Okay, let me fix these up. Uh oh. have some of the flowers here. I attached these flowers to regular sewing string so that it would kind of look like they're just uh, suspended in midair. And I hope it works, but it might just become a tangled mess. I'm just making a small knot up against the trellis. The string is definitely working. Let me take a look. Oh, that looks so pretty <laughs> and whimsical. Oh, I just keep hoping that I don't run into any spiders. These are some of the bigger flowers. I think these are gonna make more of a statement and they'll look gorgeous in the vines. We're gonna use more of the colorful banners and doors. I think I'm gonna do some of the, this thing, what's it called? Streamer. Should I use some streamer? Hmm. I think I like the way it looks without the streamer actually. But should I? Let's see here. I'm gonna try one trellis just to see how I like it. But then if I don't like it, then I can take it off before I do the other ones. But I do want more pop of orange. Ah! Hopefully 
Please don't let that be any bugs. Oh, that looks so pretty. Oh, that looks so pretty. Okay. Yep, I'm doing it. I'm gonna do at least one on each arch. It looks so pretty. For my mom's altar, I'm going to use this blue table cover because blue is her favorite color and then this bright pink color because she loved wearing bright lipsticks. This is one of her favorites. Let me go grab some tape really quick. And I was thinking about making a skirt with the pink. Or I can also do it like this, look. That looks so nice. I think I'm gonna add some flowers. I wanted to try and put a couple of these flowers throughout. I'm just taking little pieces of tape so that I can add some of the flowers around it. How's that looking? Or These lights should turn on. There we go. Doesn't that look beautiful? Because I feel like if I put candles, it might be a little bit too dangerous. That's beautiful. I also brought this one because it was an arrangement for my little sister's quince. So it has a lot of sentimental meaning because we tried to make the day as special for her. And I know my mom was there in spirit, so. I'm not gonna cry. So I'm gonna set this up over here. I don't know whether to put it there. I'll put it here. My mom's altar is finally set up. I think it looks so beautiful. And the only thing missing from it is the harvest. So every single year as part of the ofrenda, I fill a harvest basket for my mom and I add it as part of the ofrenda because this whole garden wouldn't be here if it wasn't for her. She was literally the inspiration and 
She was the reason I worked so hard this summer to bring it back to life. <sighs> was so that it would be beautiful, so I would have a harvest for the de los muertos. So anyways, before I go inside, I'm just gonna sweep really quick, keep things nice and tidy, um, and then I'm done. Tomorrow my sister's coming over and we're making me seal this, which is one of those meals that just a thousand percent remind us of my mom. And then I'm also going to make calabaza melada. And then we usually watch videos of her. We talk about her and we try to honor her as much as we can. We share all like the best stories with my kids. That way they remember. Or that way they have memories of Nana. And I know I'm going to be a hot mess tomorrow. So I don't know if I'm... Hold on. I don't know if I'll actually record anything. Um, I'll try and share little snippets, but I really just want to take the time to spend with my family remembering my mom. You know, after my mom passed, I spent a lot, a lot of time in denial that she was gone. And um, I wait for the phone to ring because I convinced myself that one day she was going to call me up and, <laughs> and it would all be a nightmare and she wouldn't really be gone. And it took me a long time just to accept that she was gone, that she'd moved on, and that she was finally at rest because, man, I didn't know how I would go another day without her. You know, all of my childhood, my mom, not all, for most of my childhood, my mom was sick. There were so many times where I thought I'd lost her and she would always, she would always fight and she'd wake up. And so I feel like there was a part of me that believed that she would never leave, you know, she would always be here. And so on January 4th, when I got the phone call, it was the worst news of my life. And I think losing her put me in a really, really dark place and gardening helped with all of that creating this garden and being inspired by her, her beauty, her strength. It made me feel so much closer to her. Every single time I'm out here, I feel like she's right beside me. And every time something blooms, I imagine how happy she must be. Things like the roses, her beautiful red roses, those are planted because of her. And every time they bloom, I think to myself, oh, she must love the sight right now. And um, I actually don't like cutting them and bringing them indoors because I want them to last as long as possible out here for her. Gardening has helped me in so many ways. I think the biggest one has definitely just been, it has helped me heal inside a lot. I am happier than I've ever been. Gardening isn't just like a hobby for me, it's my passion. Feliz Día de los Muertos. the next morning and I tied up the two little corners on each of the papel picado 
that way you could see the flowers dangling a lot more and i think it actually looks so much prettier it goes with the shape of the arch more and i think next year i'm probably going to make the papel picado just a little bit smaller or i'm gonna make sure to add several more that way we have more of an arch but i think it looks beautiful like this as well see the flowers look like they're floating in midair oh she looks beautiful mm -hmm. 